Hello trainers and gym leaders, I'm Dark Trainer Q and I figured as a just for fun sort of challenge I would do my very first Nuzlocke. And while I know a lot of people tend to go for Ruby or Omega Ruby or Platinum for the first Nuzlocke, I want to do something a little different and maybe, just maybe, something a little bit more on the basic side. I wanted to start with the first generation and if I enjoyed that Nuzlocke I would go on with generation 2 and so on. So for this Nuzlocke I chose specific rules and I stuck with them. If a Pokemon faints, it's dead. Pretty basic rule. Uh, I have to give every Pokemon a nickname. Another one. Uh, I can only catch the first Pokemon I find in an area, but I consider buildings and separate floors as different areas, as well as giveaways, because I consider them different encounters. I'm allowing myself to skip Pokemon that I've already caught if I happen to come across one in a different area. Uh, I'm not allowed to pull a Pokemon from the box until something faints, so... When I pick a Pokemon, I have to stick with it until it either faints or until I win. Um, and no out-of-game trades, meaning I can't just go to uh, Pokemon Blue and p trade something in, which means that Pokemon like Gengar, Machamp, Golem, and Alakazam are completely out of the question. Now that I've got my rules, I had to choose which version that I wanted to do. And honestly, picking it was pretty easy. I wanted it to be yellow. Which I know is a bit of a rough start, but after Cerulean City, it gets a whole lot easier, you know, considering the Pokemon that become available. So, starting off, after Blue decides that he wants the Eevee that was originally supposed to be for me, Oak just decides to give me the Pikachu that he caught, and I name it Sparky. I beat Blue pretty easily, head to Viridian City, grab Oak's parcel, come back, get the Pokedex, go back to Viridian City, buy Pokeballs, which officially starts the Nuzlocke. I head back to Route 1, where I catch a Pidgey that I name King PPP. Going forward, I knew my first challenge was going to be defeating Brock, and having Pikachu as my starter, and only really having access to normal flying and bug type Pokemon to choose from, I really had to strategize and hope I was lucky enough to come across a male Nidoran. I believe the male part was important as the female Nidoran didn't learn Double Kick in the first generation games until level 49, where the male Nidoran learned it at level 12. Thankfully, my first encounter on Route 22 was a male Nidoran, which I named Pointer. Though, it turns out I was wrong and I went back and looked things up, and it turns out it doesn't really matter which Nidoran that I would have caught. They both get Double Kick at level 12 in Pokemon Yellow. Turns out both lines are actually pretty much the same in terms of move pools in Generation 1. I can't say for Generation 2 and onward, I'll figure that out if I happen to catch a Nidoran in either of those games. Moving on, the Viridian's Forest was a cakewalk and I caught a Caterpie named Bugsy. The trainers were really easy and just before reaching Peter City I caught a Rattata that I named Chip. And then came the grinding, because I thought after the Battle of Brock there would be a rival battle. And I certainly remember there being a battle after the gym. But it turns out that's just in red, blue, fire red, and leaf green, because it sure as hell isn't there in yellow. Anyway, I leveled Pointer to level 15 just to give some leeway in levels, and brought everyone else up to level 10. It turns out that I really overestimated the level of Brox's Onyx, because it was a super cakewalk. Like, the only thing that even caused any damage to Nidoran was Bide, which as we all know causes a Pokemon to skip a turn and deal back double the damage that it was dealt, bringing Nidoran into the yellow, but not enough to actually kill it. Nidoran takes out Onyx, and Brock is defeated. And as a little bit of an extra treat, Nidoran evolved into Nidorino. There was much rejoicing. Once I realized that there wasn't a rival battle after the Peter City Gym, I fought all the trainers on the way to Mount Moon, and after seeing their levels, and the levels of all the wild Pokemon, I knew I really had to bulk up. I ended up reaching the Pokemon Center beside Mount Moon, got the Magikarp for 500 cash, which I named Splish, and then proceeded to level everything up. There was no way I was going to get caught in Mount Moon with a Pokemon that could not do any damage. And since Magikarp doesn't learn Tackle until level 15, I had my work cut out for me. Eventually, I got impatient, went into Mount Moon, caught a Geodude, which I named Rocker, and proceeded to go through Mount Moon. It was really easy. I didn't realize that I wasn't recording any of it, so I have absolutely zero footage for it, unfortunately. A mistake that I took in stride. I had pretty much no trouble in Mount Moon, because all my Pokemon were pretty high level, or at least, you know, level 15 to 20 in that area. Going through in Basement 1, I encountered a Zubat, which I fainted, and then a Paris in Basement 2, which I fainted. I wasn't trying to faint them, but that's just kind of how it turned out. I got the Helix Fossil and promptly left Mount Moon. Upon leaving, I caught a Mankey on Route 4, which I named Scritch, and after doing a whole lot of leveling, I took on the Nugget Bridge trainers and got through them without any problems. I caught a Bellsprout on Route 5 that I named Vine, and then I went up and talked to the trainer and got the Charmander, which I named Liz. I continued my way through Route 5 until I got to Bill, where I got the SSN ticket and made my way back down to Cerulean City. 
I continue to level up Splish into Gyarados, King PPP into Pidgeotto, and Chip into Raticate. Sparky remained as my only pre-evolve, and it would continue to stay that way because, well, you can't get a Raichu in yellow unless you trade for one. And because that's one of my rules, no Raichu for me. Anyway, I went on to challenge Misty, and I really underestimated how much of a tank her Starmie is. Sparky did very little damage to it with his electric moves, so I sent out Chip, which was a seriously foolish choice on my part. Despite doing a buttload of damage to it with Hyper Fang, Starmie's Bubble Beam did a lot of damage. And with the mistake of going past a single attack, and a mistake in click on the third round, Chip was hit with a water gun and died. Two badges in, and I already have a death on my hands. Once Missy's defeated, I pulled out Liz, and because I'm totally brilliant and forgot that the third gym was electric type, I didn't pull out Geodude. Knowing that I made my bed and will have to lie in it, I started to level up Liz in preparation for the Vermilion gym. Before leaving Cerulean City, I go to get the Bulbasaur, and because whether or not I get it is dependent on Pikachu's happiness, I spam the potions by giving them to Sparky, despite not having any effect on its health or the number of potions that I have. I left Cerulean City and went down Route 5, the actual Route 5 this time. I jumped down all the ledges, not seeing a single Pokemon, and drop off Bugsy at the daycare. After all, I will need Bugsy to help battle Sabrina, and I can't risk it getting hurt if I happen to make a mistake. I pull Brocker from the DC and catch a Drowsy I named NyQuil, and then proceed to level everyone up to 25 before proceeding to the SSN. At least that was the intention. I got Rocker to level 19 before getting cocky, and Rocker was fainted by a wild Drowsy. I seriously thought he could take another hit, but boy was I wrong. I pull NyQuil from the box and decide to let Splish and Pointer take the lead. I'll level the others as I need them. I stock up on Super Potions and a few other supplies and enter the SSN. I get through all the trainers and realize I very much overprepared for the rival battle. Once I get cut, I go through the Diglett Tunnel and get the Flash HM. From there, I go to challenge Lieutenant Surge. Truth be told, I was very nervous about this battle. Half my team was super weak to electricity and Pointer is my only remaining effective Pokemon in this gym. At first, I almost feel like I underprepared after his Raichu gives a devastating Mega Kick, but Pointer survived and fainted it with just a few horn attacks. I give Sparky Flash and then I go through the rock tunnel, which I quite literally had no issues, and eventually make it to Lavender Town. Knowing there's a rival battle in the tower, I made my way to Celadon City to level up my Pokemon. I went to the game corner and worked my way through the basements and defeated Giovanni with only Splish. And once I left the game corner, I did some research on Erica's level and damn near panicked when I saw that they were all over level 30. I had a lot of grinding still to do. But I also had a Sylph scope and a tower that I had to climb. I did a lot of grinding to prepare for this rival battle, and it turns out I really didn't need to stress all that much. I was so overleveled for this battle, but not so much for the rest of the tower. I had to leave a few times to heal up, and let's face it, those status conditions that you get from Gastly's are a bitch to get through. But after hitting the healing pad, the rest of the tower wasn't too bad. The only real downside was right after catching Casper the Ghastly, I ran into a Cubone, which I really would have wanted more. To persevere <laughs> for Squidward. Just, I don't want to do this. After a bit more leveling, I decide to at the very least level up Liz, and I did this by battling the gym trainers. And other than continually paralyzing Liz, they did all fall to his ember attacks. For shits and giggles, and obviously because I can't get over being cocky, I decide just to fight Erica. The problem was, I didn't visit a Pokemon Center before battling, and I was out of paralyze heals. In fact, I didn't even think about it until after I'd initiated the battle. It was much too late by then. Liz was paralyzed, King PPP was underleveled, and the rest of my Pokemon were weak to grass types. Not my finest moment. Liz managed to beat Tangela, but being paralyzed, Weeping Bell managed to get in a lot of asses attacks, and almost killed Liz at one point. King PPP took some damage, but ultimately killed the Weeping Bell. Then came Gloom. King PPP and Liz were too damaged to fight, one good hit and they'd be dead. In one last desperate attempt, I sent out Pointer, knowing Gloom couldn't poison him. In one in a million chance, I chose Horndrill. Knowing Pointer was fairly tanky, I knew that if it happened to miss, Pointer would still be able to manage a couple good attacks before really feeling any sort of damage. And lo and behold, in some form of miracle, the Horndrill hit, and Gloom was one-shotted. Erica was officially defeated. Once the fight with Erica was done, I took the Poke Flute to go fight Snorlax, believing I was ready. I was not ready for Snorlax. 
With Headbutt alone, it managed to take out all my Pokemon to the low yellow and even one to the red, as well as killing Nyquil. I eventually chose to run and Snorlax vanished. And then, believing Fuchsia City was only just around the corner, I continued forward and battled a trainer. Much to my dismay when I realized he used both a Voltorb and an Electrode, and none of my Pokemon had gone to a Pokemon Center since the fight with Snorlax, two self-destructs later and Pointer died. No! That was a heart loss. Pointer had basically carried the team whenever Splish was unable to. It was one of my first Pokemon in the Nuzlocke, and it really hurt to lose him. I ran back to Lavender Town and pulled out Casper the Ghastly, and decided to keep the sixth spot in my party free, just in case the next thing that I saw was actually worth catching. I eventually reached Future City and hit up the Poke Center, and head out to catch Pokemon. The first one I found was a Gloom, which I named Durian, and it became my sixth team member. To help level my Pokemon, especially King PPP, I went to the dojo in Saffron City and took down all the trainers, including the Master. I then grabbed the Hitmon Lee I named Bruce and headed to Sylphco. Almost immediately, Durian is one-shotted and I have to replace it with Bruce. I get through Sylphco pretty easily, only really having to leave to go to the Pokemon Center just a few times. I do the rival battle, which is finally on the same level as me, so it's at least somewhat of a challenge, but it still came out as pretty easy due to several type advantages. I get the Lapras, I name Nessie, and I go on to fight Giovanni. And once again, his ground types are no match for Splish, and the Persian is quickly disposed of by Bruce. After a little more leveling, I finally get impatient enough to fight Koga, who, despite claiming to use poison types, uses only real bug poison types. So that said, Liz and King PPP made short work of those bugs. And immediately after getting the Soul Badge, I headed to Cinnabar Island, and I started leveling up, focusing primarily on Splish, as I believed he would be the main winner against Blaine's fire types. But in a bit of a twist, I opted to use Liz for the battle using Earthquake. Turns out it works much better than I'd imagined, and Splish only came out at the very end. With only two more badges to go, I got down to the grind. Sabrina's Abra, Kadabra, and Alakazam were all level 20 in Pokemon Yellow, and I was not taking any chances with them. Every one of my team had to be level 50 as well. And even then, I knew full well that Casper and Bruce would not be participating in this battle. No matter how it went down, I couldn't bring myself to use them. And I couldn't really switch them up for Bugsy due to my no changeout rule, so everyone had to be prepared. But on the plus side, I knew Giovanni would once again be a snap, as Splish would be able to kill pretty much every Pokemon he sends out, and even the Persian would be no problem to Bruce. And knowing that made the countless hours spent in the Pokemon Mansion going back and forth, back and forth, made it almost worth it. Once I finally got everyone leveled up, I made my way to Sabrina's gym. Now, I'm not gonna lie, I was nervous as hell over this. I was certain I was gonna lose a Pokemon. But King PPP managed to one-shot all three of her Pokemon with Fly, and five minutes later I was in Viridian City and defeating Giovanni for the third and final time. I made no issue of getting through Victory Road, and though I did hit a small snag when Liz was poisoned and I had to keep him alive until I got to the Pokemon Center, far from that, it was actually pretty easy. Once hitting the Indigo Plateau, I did some research as to what the Elite Four and the Champion have for Pokemon and their levels, and I learned that I was going to have to level up a whole lot more. Nobody could be under level 60, and after that, I would just have to use type advantages as my advantage. Once I finally got everyone to level 60, I finally left to take out the Elite Four, hoping I had enough potions and full heals. Lorelei was super easy. Sparky thundered all but Jinx, which I sent out Liz to take care of. Bruno was just as easy, having Splish to take care of his rock types, Liz to take out the Hitmonchan, and Casper to defeat Hitmonlee and Machamp. As for Agatha... Liz was the star of the show. I used Earthquake on everyone except Goldbat, which Sparky dispatched. Unfortunately, due to some recording errors, I wasn't able to get the last bit of Bruno's or Agatha's fight, which really sucked because, though the consistent one-shots did make it a little bit of an anticlimactic fight for all, both of them. Lance was the fight I was most worried about. One misstep and I would be done for. And of course, I made a misstep right off the hop by not sending out Sparky first. But somehow luck was on my side as Gyarados went for a leer after changing him out, which allowed Sparky to one-shot it with Thunder. Splish then removed both Dragonairs and Aerodactyl with ease. And then came the Dragonite. I told Splish to use Blizzard, and he missed. This was it. I was done for. Dragonite hit Splish with a Thunder, and miraculously he survived. If I had been one level lower, I'd have been screwed. I tried healing Splish a couple of times, only to be continuously hit with Thunder. It was then that I knew someone had died. 
I looked at the rival team, and Bruce was the only one totally unnecessary. So I sent Bruce out to get hit with a hyper beam while I healed Splish. And of course, being the dunce that I am, I forgot about Splish's paralysis. So when I sent Splish out, Dragonite got the first move. If Blizzard didn't hit this time, someone else was going to have to die. And I really didn't want that. But Blizzard hit, and it was a one-hit KO. After that, the rival battle was pretty simple. I just used the type advantages for everything except Alakazam, which Liz used Flamethrower. Once Blue's defeated, I officially won my very first Pokemon Nuzlocke. I'd considered doing the postgame, but since it's just Mewtwo, I decided to pass. After all, I used the Master Ball on Zapdos just because I could and had no intention of doing the after game anyway. Anyway, I hope you all enjoyed my first attempt at Nuzlocke. I had a lot of fun. Though, spending two-thirds of my gameplay grinding for levels wasn't near as fun as I would have hoped, but it wasn't really all that bad. I actually kind of got really attached to the Pokemon that I was using, and I didn't want any of them to die. But at the same time, I kind of understood that, you know, strategy and winning was kind of what was important at this point. But that's about all I got for you, so like I said, I hope you all enjoyed my first attempt at a Nuzlocke, and have a good one!